Eight months ago, before she had moved to the small farm she inherited, she had a romantic notions about it. It would feel so good, she imagined. They would smell so sweet. But instead, everything had seemed strange and threatening to her from the start. And it was getting worse. Now, she didn't even feel protected by the house. She hated the prairie and everything on it. I'm afraid all the time. I know, Jamie. I'm always afraid of being alone. The crop of twig every night, the storm cellar, the horses that might step on me, the cows that might trample on me, the chickens that might peck me, the cats that might bite me and have rabies. The tornadoes, the blizzards, storms. I'm also afraid having to drive so far to get simple groceries and supplies. You live here all your life. You're used to it, so it doesn't scare you. Mm -hmm. Is Bob coming back tonight? Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Then, can I sleep here tonight? No. I Sorry, Jamie, but I've got too much book work to do, and it's hard to concentrate with people in the house. I even told the girls they can take their sleeping bags to the barn tonight to give me some peace. They want to spend the night out there because we've got a new little blind cow for nursing. Oh. Aren't you afraid of anything, Cece? Yes, I am too. You are? What? It's so silly, I'm even afraid to mention it. Tell me, I'll feel better if you're afraid of things too. Alright, well, I'm afraid of something happening to Bob. A wreck on a highway or something. Or to one of the girls or my folks. Things like that. I mean, like leukemia or heart attack. Or something I cannot control. I'm always afraid there won't be enough money that we might and that we might have to sell this place. We're so happy living here. I guess I'm afraid that might happen. I guess I'm afraid that might change. I guess that's what I'm afraid of. But I don't think about it anymore. I don't think about it. I think about mine all the time. I know, Jane. I hate it here. You know, you could always move back. You know, I can't afford that. But I love coming over here. It always makes me feel, feel so better. This is the only place I feel safe anymore. Every door was locked, every window was permanently shut and locked, so that she didn't have to check them every night. All the curtains were drawn, the porch lights were off, and her car was locked in the barn so no trucker would think she was home. Lately, she had taken to sleeping with her aunt's loaded pistol on the pillow beside her head.
her eyes flying open and the rest of her body frozen. She imagined in a confused, hallucinatory kind of way that somebody was both coming to get her and already there in the house. Her fear of rape, of torture, of kidnapping, of agony, of death was a balloon and she floated horribly in the center of it. Jane then did as she had chained herself to do every night so that her actions would be instinctive. She turned her face to the pistol on the other room and placed her tongue on the trigger. There were thumps and other sounds downstairs and they joined her in the balloon. There was an engine roaring and then suddenly it was silent. And a slur was C.C. Johnson had awakened too, although she hadn't known why. Something, some noise had stared her. C.C. got out of bed and ran to the window. No, it wasn't a storm. The rain hadn't come. A motorcycle. That's what she'd heard. That's what had awakened her. Darn you, Janie Bomb. Your fears are contagious. That's what they are. If you don't have fears, they can't come true.